but I just want to now switch gears and talk a little bit about the bicycling exposure data or the ridership data. So I showed you how, you know, ridership and, and incidents kind of followed a similar trend over a 24 hour period. And, and how, and the reason it's so important to always consider ridership is imagine a scenario where there were 10 bike crashes. And so we looked at it and decided let's put in a bike lane. And then the next year there were a hundred bike crashes. And you might look at that and on the surface think bike lanes are not safe. But what could have happened is that you had 10 crashes and you had 10 bicyclists in the first year, but then you built a bike lane and people loved it so much that now you had you know, 5,000 people bicycling down here. And so now your crashes have gone up to 100, but the percent of people getting injured is actually way lower. So it's really important that you always consider the ridership volume or the exposure. Otherwise, you could come to all sorts of false conclusions when you do your analysis. So when we started to try and analyze the bike maps data, we went out looking for where can we find this exposure data? And so it turns out that most cities don't have the funds to, to collect bike volume data. So they collect vehicle volume data, but bike volume data is either yeah, collected by volunteers. So on the left here um, is a volunteer who's helping with a, an annual count. So some bike advocacy organizations in cities will organize, um, and actually some of the regions organize it as well. They get volunteers to go out and stand at an, at an intersection or a crossing for a couple of hours, a couple of times um, a year, and then they count the number of bikes. So that's one way. So you can imagine, you know, you might get 50 locations in your city counted for two hours or maybe four hours a year. So helpful, but not super representative. Then the other way that people collect bike data is they put out these eco counters or some kind of continuous counter this is one I had installed when I was at Arizona State University. It's Fury the Fork because they have a sun devil and in their sports, they say Fury the Fork. So here we are fearing the fork, not the road. Um, and this provides at one spot, continuous data on the number of people that are out bicycling. But because we're mappers, we know that if you collect data at one location in your city, that's not very representative of everything going on. So, there is a fitness app. Well, it's an app called Strava. It's used for a wide variety. It kind of started as a fitness app, but it's actually used for all kinds of bicycling. People record how far they go. They race their friends. There's all kinds of um, fun things you can do, but it records this sample of, who's, of all Strava users who are out there bicycling. And Strava has made their data available to help researchers and cities better plan their bicycling infrastructure. 